I'm feeling some imposter syndrome today. You've felt it before too, right? It's a really weird one to process through, so let me help both of us right now by putting it into words. In processing imposter syndrome, I need to go through three phases. Name the feelings, address identity insecurity, and decide what to do about it. Let me give you some context. I have nine years of experience writing for magazines, and I recently reached out to an editor at a publication I never thought I'd ever write for. She loved my work. I asked a lot of questions to make sure it was truly a good fit, and I knew that I could offer what she needed in a writer. We made it official, and now I'm on my first assignment. This is where the imposter syndrome is hitting hardest. I sent a cold email to someone I wanted to interview for the article. I've sent a bajillion of cold emails before, but this one is for a new publication that I've never worked with before. It's my first time emailing someone and saying, hi, I'm a writer with this respected publication and I'd like to talk with you. Do you have time for me? A little voice inside me says that person will not respond to your email. You are not worth responding to. You probably messed something up already. You don't deserve to have your name next to that publication's name and everyone will know. This is where phase one comes into play. I need to name these feelings. What is actually going on inside of me? Imposter syndrome starts by feeling a little vague and mushy and messy and uncomfortable as your guts twist with the nerves. Um, but as we name these feelings, we can feel a little less overwhelmed. It becomes a conversation rather than a takeover. So here are some feelings I have found in myself. I feel nervous, insecure, small, worthless. Um, but it's good to know what I'm working with. And the word small is the most surprising one I discovered because that feeling brings me back to my child self. If you've ever done any inner child work, you know that we are an accumulation of our experiences. You aren't just the today version of yourself, you're also the three-year-old, eight-year-old, 19-year-old versions of yourself and everything in between. And whatever you experienced along the way influences how you feel about the world and how you choose to keep yourself safe. If you want to learn about this, um, I greatly appreciate Patrick Tian's videos. I'll link them in the description so you can browse them for yourself. Um, a lot of really great information there. So once I realized that my feelings were the start of an inner child dialogue, the more clearly I could see what was happening. I want to feel safe. And my inner child, the past self that felt small and vulnerable and uncared for, is trying to protect, protect me from rejection. She's trying to warn me that when I reach out to some, someone, bad things will happen. So I'd better get to a safe place before the rejection comes. As I dialogue with this small voice inside of me, I can let myself know that it will be okay. This dialogue leads to phase two, which is addressing identity insecurity. I am the same person that I have always been, that three-year-old, five-year-old, 10-year-old, all of them. And joining this publication's freelance pool doesn't make me a different person. We all want to succeed and we all have and and we all want to have that success recognized, but what you'll notice along the way is that success doesn't automatically change how you think or feel about yourself. It doesn't level up your self-worth. This is why people often feel depressed or in a slump after successes rather than happy because they realize that it isn't enough. So Scott Erickson has some really great identity talk in his book, Say Yes, Discover the Surprising Life Beyond the Death of a Dream. Um, and I'll add the link to that because it was a really fantastic read. So whether we face success or failure, we need to pay attention to our self-talk. What identity statements are we saying about ourselves? It'll be worth, I'll, sorry, I'll be worth something if I can just do this. I'm not worth anything until I get this. I got that and I did that, but what's the point unless, and so it goes, there's always something else, something ahead, something unattainable. Um, it's a heap of conditions that separate us from actually enjoying the journey, actually enjoying ourselves and who we are. Um, we need to pay attention to the identity statements that we habitually make about ourselves. I have done a lot of work in this area personally, so that when I feel myself saying terrible things about myself, I can catch it and ask a whole lot of great questions. My imposter syndrome says that I'm a little slug that deserves rejection because I am small and I will always get something wrong. And okay, some part of me does feel like a sad, squishy slug. <laughs> I hate slugs. Um, whoop, that's a sign. See, the, word, the fact that the word slug came out and I hate slugs, like it says something about how I feel about myself, at least some part of myself. But I know I am not 
overall a sad, squishy slug. I am also a confident person. I am curious and I am great at problem solving. I am a person who can recover from mistakes. I can self-reflect. I can apologize or pivot as needed. I am also quite gentle and patient with that part of me that feels like a slug because I know from experience that squishing those feelings or bottling them up won't actually make them go away. That leads me to the third phase, so what do we do about this? What decisions do we make? What choices do we choose that will help us with this inner child dialogue and slug identity crisis? So these questions, along with the processing that we already did, lead to informed self-care. Today, I am making art. I am processing feelings. I am caring for my home and taking walks. I know that the negative feelings will fade away in time, I just need to make healthy choices for myself in the meantime. And honestly, even with the imposter syndrome still bothering me a little, I feel great about the work I'm doing. I feel great about the quality of the emotional labor I'm doing for myself. I'm feeling great about being brave in my writing. So with that, I'll ask you, what feelings can you name? What identity statements are you habitually playing over and over again in your head? What self-care are you going to invest in today? You are brave, you are smart, you are capable, and you are growing. So keep processing. You're doing great. And um, I hope you have an awesome day.